Tonight we shine a spotlight on a mission to provide more than warm meals to people in poverty. It's a restaurant, no reservations needed, openness required. Keisha Lopez takes us inside the Gospel Cafe. The Good Book says, seek and ye shall find. What you'll discover beyond the front door of this small house is good food and lots of fellowship. All are welcome at the Gospel Cafe. All right, let's go. Each Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 11.30 a.m. to 1 in the afternoon, more than 100 people walk or wheel their way to the front counter to order lunch. For some, it could be the only meal they get for the day. You know, there's days I've been without water, food, or anything, and I've asked for help, and people just tell me no. Danielle has been a patron of the cafe for about nine months. She says she's been homeless for two years, and she comes back for more than good grub. They make you feel like a person. They make you feel human. That means sitting at a table, drinking out of glasses, using silverware, not the plastic single-use utensils, and choosing what to eat for free. Tex-Mex casserole, meat balls over rice, chicken tenders, we'll call chicken tenders, and the sides are with green beans, rice and gravy. And we also do a salad with uh, all sorts of um, different dressings, whatever, which you won't believe ranch is the biggest. Some people like ranch on everything. It is those choices that Danielle and the others say mean so much because out on the streets, there aren't many. There's just something about feeding people that uh, touches the heart. One of the biggest components of the Gospel Cafe is community. People from all walks of life come here to share a meal. Our original customers were to be both rich and poor and a safe place for that to come together. Uh, without distinction because as Christians, whether you're rich or you're poor, you're loved by God the same. Over time, that's changed. The line outside the door has gotten so long, many from the business community don't have the time to wait. John Cowley, a member of Cross Ties Ecumenical Church, which bought what was an old dilapidated home, renovated it, and started the Gospel Cafe here nearly 30 years ago. He says the number of people who come through the cafe right now is manageable, but... If on any one day, everybody who regularly comes came, we would have 500 people here. We get lots of people coming periodically. Still, 100 or 500 takes a lot of money and preparation on behalf of the other folks in this purposefully created community. That's where the volunteers come in. Candace Moore is one of several from a number of churches that help out in the kitchen. Some make grocery runs, which can cost hundreds to more than a grand per week. Others cook. Some drop off tasty sweets. And as she chops the celery for the salad, she hopes to also chip away some of the anxiety of searching for that next meal. Sometimes there's children here, especially in the summertime, uh, or moms with children, and then we ring a little bell because they need a little extra help with getting children served. So It's a labor of love that bridges the gap between the haves and have-nots, a space where relationships are formed say that not only do we have this wonderful friendship of working together, but we get to know some of these people and realize that there's not that much difference between them and us. Hmm. And I think you don't find that unless you're around people and serve them and you have a give and take. And it's that kind of balance that many say can only be achieved with their faith at the center. After the food is ready and before the doors swing open, a huddle to give thanks and ask for another blessed day. Father, thank you for this day, this place, these people. Looking back, Cowley remembers what attracted his small congregation to this part of town. Uh, back then, the neighborhood was a vibrant, poor neighborhood. Lots of houses rented, but some owned, and lots of poor people lived in the whole area. That's not the case anymore because of gentrification. The Gospel Cafe is near the Silo District and all its high-priced shopping, eateries, and tourists. While these old homes are being torn down and replaced with upscale vacation rentals and hotels, many of its homeless inhabitants 
remain for now. Volunteers say since the neighborhood continues to change and threaten this mission of mercy, what's next? The poor are pushed out and the services that help them are forced to close or relocate. Still, it's a move many like Danielle, who says she suffers with heart failure, can't afford. We'd have to go to Salvation Army, but like me, I can't walk all the way to Salvation Army. So I'd be stuck literally with nothing. So how can you survive? I don't know. I don't know. Whether it's in need of physical or spiritual aid, this cafe hopes to give a glimpse of what they say kingdom living looks like. Uh, I would like to, for people to know that it's a place of love and it's a place of complete acceptance. There's no judgment here. And we are here because we believe that to serve others is to serve Christ. So that's our bottom line. People in service and people in need being fed and treated with dignity. It's not a big slice of what the kingdom should be, but it's a big enough slice for us to do it and continue to do it. In Waco, Keisha Lopez, KWTX News 10. The Gospel Cafe does run on donations. Those who drop by and can afford it, leave a little something. If you'd like to donate your time, Callie says just drop by before morning prayer. That's at 1125. If you want to contribute financially, check out this story on our website for an address to mail your donation.